All right, back at it again. Um, this is the start of the next unit here. This is chapter three. Um, again, this is still reviewing hours we're on topic. So as we talk here, you should recognize that um, you already know how to do this kind of as we get in the flow of this. Again, this is something I already had created. So don't worry about this. This is actually section three one. All right, we're going to talk about solving systems of equations by graphing, okay? A system of anything means that there's just more than one of those items. So a system of equations just means that there's more than one equation that's going to be solved. Now, um, here, here we go. Pause the video if you want to write down these vocab words, of course. So, um, a two or more linear equations together forms a system of linear equations. Again, system means more than one. Now, the solution of the system of linear equations is any ordered pair that makes all of the equations in the system true. We are specifically going to be working with um, two equations in a system. Sorry, a system has two equations. So the a, an x comma y that makes both of those equations true is the answer to the entire system. Okay, let's start pretty easy here and we'll talk about uh, what's going on and how we know where the answer is. Okay, so this line here I will uh, do in red, okay? The y is by itself. Remember, don't graph anything until the y is by itself. Um, we have a y-intercept of negative 3. So on the y-axis, I put a dot here at negative 3. My slope is 2, okay? I like slope to look like a fraction, rise over run. So if it doesn't look like a fraction, you can always put it over 1, 2 over 1. Remember when graphing that all slopes run to the right. We always want to go right. If it's a positive slope, we'll go up and to the right. If it's a negative slope, we'll go down and to the right. So I'm going up to right one, up to right one. And when you're solving by graphing, you should make your line as long as possible. So after I go up and to the right until the, I get to the end of the piece of graph paper, then I'll go the exact opposite down and to the left. Okay, and now I have my line. I'll connect my dots. Technically, this line should have arrows on both ends because lines go forever in both directions. We'll switch colors to do the next line here, okay? We'll go with blue. Again, now my it, I have a, a y-intercept of negative 1. My slope is imaginary 1 or 1 over 1, okay? So I'm going up 1 as positive, so up and to the right, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Okay, again, making my line as long as I can. Now, what I want to get, and we'll just do this one for this first one because I want to make sure that you understand what's happening here. Okay, so we are looking for the point that makes both of the equations true. Now, what is a line? Why do these, why are these points on this line? Okay, we got to make sure that we remember and understand this. Every point on the red line makes the red equation true. Okay, let's try one really fast. So, for instance, let's pick this point right here, which is the point 0, 3. Okay, 0, 3 is a point on the red line. Okay, why is it on the red line? Because it makes the red equation true, meaning that when the y is 3, let's go over here, 3 equals... Sorry, it's 0, negative 3. Sorry, sorry, it's 0, that's the point, 0, 0 comma, negative 3. Wow, this pen doesn't like to work in this part of my screen. Sorry. So when the y is negative 3, that is equal to 2 times x is 0 minus 3. And yes, 2 times 0 is 0 minus 3 is negative 3. It makes the equation true. That's why it's on the red line. Okay? Any point that's not on the red line would not make the red equation true. It would make the red equation false. Okay? So every point on the red line makes the red equation true. Every point on the blue line makes the blue equation true. Which point makes them both true? Well, it's the only point that they share, which is this intersection point right here. So the answer is where the two lines intersect, which in this case would be 2, 1. Okay? All right, if you need more examples of that, let me know when you're in class and I can help you, of course. But it's really just graphing y equals mx plus b lines. I think that you um, all know how to do that and can be confident. So let's talk about some things that might make it a little bit 
you know, some, um, some special case solutions, let's call it. Okay. So um, sometimes you can have no solutions. If the um, answer is where the two lines intersect, then what if they don't intersect? And what, what are those two lines called if they do not intersect? Well, let's look at this problem that we have here. All right, in red, I'm about to graph the top line here that I got a red dot next to. It has a y-intercept of positive one. It has a slope of negative two, negative two over one. Now remember, we always run to the right. Negative slopes go down to the right, down to right one, down to right one, down to right one. And again, I'm making this line as long as I physically can, especially the first line. I want to make it as long as I physically can because what I'm doing is I am creating as many points for the next line to cross it as possible. Okay, once the second line crosses this first line, I don't have to keep making the second line as long as possible because I know I'm just looking for the intersection point. Now, the second line, that again, I'll do here in blue, it has a y-intercept of negative 1. It's now going down to right 1 again because it's negative 2 over 1, down to right 1, down to right 1. Okay, and what you'll notice here is that these two lines never intersect. They are staying the exact distance away from each other because they have the same slope. And I think you'll remember from our previous unit, two lines that have the same slope are what's called parallel. Parallel lines never cross. This means that I would write that my answer is no solution. There is no point. There is no X comma Y. There is no X comma Y in the history of the world that would make both of these equations true. Lastly, what about infinitely many solutions? Okay, well, if the answer is where the two lines cross, uh, then, well, let's just get to the point here, okay? I can't graph anything to the y's by itself, so first I'm going to minus 2x. So I have the 4y is equal to 8 minus 2x, okay? Then divide by 4, everything, of course everything. So I have y equals 2 minus 1 half x. Okay, now look at my blue line, the equation of my blue line. Look at the equation of what's going to be my red line. I recognize right now that they're exactly the same. Okay, if you don't, then just start graphing them. So my red line has a y-intercept of 2, negative 1 half, down 1, right 2. It's negative, so I'm going down, but I'm still going to the right. I always run to the right, down 1, right 2. Okay, so I got my red line here. Then I go to graph my blue line because I'm acting like, man, I don't, I don't notice that these two things are the same. I'm just, I'm just going through the process here. Again, my y-intercept right here is 2. Negative 1 half, down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Well, the answer is where the two lines cross. And look at this. The two lines lie right on top of each other. They touch infinitely many times, infinitely many solutions. Of course, the symbol for infinity is in sideways 8. Okay? So tips. Always get the Y by itself before you start graphing, okay? Don't graph until the Y is by itself. Make the first line as long as possible. The answer is where the two lines intersect, all right? All right, see you in class.